the Lord Jesus Christ himself declared that he is the one who will build the church. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, as he is speaking to Apostle Peter, he says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The word Peter is the small stone. Petros. And the word rock is Petras or the massive, the big rock. At sino yung big rock? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the Bible says, And did all drink the same spiritual drink? So they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Never in the history, in our lifetime, na namatay o nag-stop ang tunay na simbahan ng Panginoon. From that time na binilid niya, nang sinabi niya, Diniklear niya at sinabi niya kay Apostle Peter in Matthew 16, 18, kaunaw na ang simbahan doon sa Jerusalem. Never na na-stop, tumigil, namatay ang tunay na simbahan ng Panginoon. Otherwise, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, will be lying when He, say, when he says that, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Kung hindi man nakikita during the time of the persecution, Tangible ang mga simbahan, they are there. Maybe underground, nagtatago sa mga bundok sa kung saan hindi sila matatagpuan, but they are still gathering, worshiping God as a church. Because God says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will be with you until the end of the world. That's what the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ is. So hindi na found lamang ang simbahan 300 AD, 1600, 1800, 1900, o ngayon lang, it was, is still, it is founded by none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And throughout the ages, hanggang sa kapanahonan natin, may tunay na simbahan. At sa bawat mana ng palatay, if you are professing Christian right now, that is your obligation, responsibility to find that true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maraming kaparaanan, para yan ay malaman. But first and foremost, this is the authority of the true church, the Word of God, the Bible. The rest of the doctrines, matetes natin yan. In, sa habang ikaw ay kabilang o kasama o kabilang ng isang uh, lokal na simbahan. But first and foremost, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who has been the head of the church not a personality, not a human being, but the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. At ang isang tunay na simbahan, sabi ko nga kanina sa ating panimula, ang kanya ring goal is to please the head of the church. To act as what the head wants them to act. To please the head himself, the one who built the church, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the title of our message today, When the Body Pleases God. Ganda ng color, ano po? Ano man tawag sa color na yan? Lavender. Amen. Thank you uh, kay at, sa ating uh, kabataan, kay Brother James. Siya nagpe-prepare na ating mga poster. And by the way, before I proceed sa ating pong sermon a preaching na ating sermon ay uh, binabati ko po ang aking sarili ng happy birthday. Happy birthday, Brother Raymond. Amen. <laughs> Talagang ngayon po ang birthday ko. So salamat po sa Panginoon. Binigyan ulit tayo ng isang taon. Ano po? At uh, meron na rin akong uh, early gift kanina. Dagaling sa aking mga anak na kinuha nila yung pera sa kanilang nanay para mabili yung aking regalo. Amen. So salamat po kay Brother Sam at kay Sister Luis. And of course, kay Ate Jo. So, when the body pleases God. And if you have your Bibles with you, may I invite everyone to please stand up. At uh, makikita niyo po yan sa left hand side of your screen. First Corinthians, medyo mahaba, but uh, let's read together. First Corinthians 12, 11, 26. Halitan po tayo. I will start with 11. 12 kayo sa, sa sabay-sabay po tayo sa 26. But all this work at that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Members 
For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And if they were all one member, where were the body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon this we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have made have more abundant comeliness. Verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Let's read together. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Shall we pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we thank you once again for this time that we can read your word. We can sing songs for you. We can gather together as a church, redeem people, save people. Na nagtitipon-tipon, na may isa pong puso, may isang kagalakan na nasa kanilang mga puso at iyon ay kilalanin, itaas ang dakilang pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. We thank you once again, O God, that we can uh, uh, have this freedom, O oh God, to read your word to hear, to preach your word, O God, and even the technology na nagagamit mo upang makarating sa amin pong mga tagapakinig, ang live streaming and even the recorded sermon ng simbahan, Panginoon. Patawad po sa aming mga kasalanan at muli salamat po sa pagkakataon that we can see ourselves being part of a body. Bilang isang pong parte ng isang simbahan, maunawaan po namin ang kahalagahan nito sa buhay ng isang Kristiyano. Thank you that you have redeemed us. Thank you that Sinabi mo, Panginoon, pinagbayaran mo na yung banal na dugo, na yung banal na dugo ang simbahan, ganun kahalaga, ganun minhal ang simbahan, Panginoon. And so, we have to be returning that same love, loyalty, and service to you whilst we are here on earth and we can do that when we are part of a local New Testament Bible-believing church. Marami pong salamat muli, Panginoon. Ikaw po nawa mapapurihan sa aming kalagitnaan. This we ask and pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, His people will say, Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. When the body pleases God. Okay. Yung tamang kaparaanan through the Word of God on how a Christian can please God. At unang-una, kailangan siya po ay nasa loob ng simbahan. And what a way to start our year. Una muna, last week, di ba? Ang ating pong uh, tinignan is yung uh, our timeless God. Napakaganda ng panimula ng ating taon. Kinilala natin kung sino kilala ba talaga natin. Yung ating Diyos in His all full power and authority and love and majesty. Okay? So, yan po yung ating Diyos. Yun ang ating... Panginoon. And right now, mahalaga din sa, sa second uh, uh, Friday okay, ng uh, ating taon. Actually, first Friday, but parang uh, 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 second sermon natin for the year 2022, atin namang alamin yung kahalagahan ng pagiging part ng isang simbahan at kung paano ba napiplis ang Panginoon sa ating buhay at napiplis ang Panginoon in the life of His church. Okay? When the body pleases God. Now, as a way of introduction, in the Bible, marami pong mga pangalan, maraming names, kumbaga, of the collective body of believers, yung tawag sa atin. At iyan ay mayroong equivalent na parang metaphor or illustration in the Old Testament. Okay? Unang-una, we are called the church in the New Testament. 
In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, the Bible says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So dito pa lang nakakita na tayo ng unang-unang criteria kung sino dapat para masabi natin na yan ay tunay na simbahan, ang taong nakabali, ang, ang mga tao nakasama dyan, uh, uh, parte, miyembro ng simbahan, dapat po ay mga ligtas. Such as should be what? Saved. Nanampalataya na sa Panginoong Jesus, uh, to our Lord Jesus Christ as their one and only Lord and Savior. Okay? At right now, para natin formally na maisama sa membership, ang isang mananampalataya is either kung hindi pa siya nagkakaroon ng tamang bautismo, siya po muna ay nagpapasubject do sa authority ng baptism through the local New Testament Church. Kung siya naman ay baptized na doon sa pananampalataya, ang katulad natin ay itinatransfer lamang yung kanyang membership dito po sa atin pong simbahan. At first and foremost, the person should be saved, ligtas na nampalataya na sa Panginoong Hesus bilang kanyang Panginoon na tagapagligtas. Minsan natetempt ang mga simbahan na magkaroon ng blanket recognition na ang lahat ng umaattend ay immediately ay member na ng simbahan. Hindi po. Meron tayong mga regular na umaattend malamang previously o in the in the coming future, pati isa lamang po ang approach ng Duns Baptist Church. Masiguradong sila po ay ligtas. Kung sa first time pa lamang ay ina-approach na natin at pinipresent, piniwitisan sila of the gospel of salvation. And after that, sila po ay tinuturuan ng discipleship, especially on the doctrine of baptism. Hanggang finally, the Holy Spirit speak in their hearts. Walang pilitan, no, no influence, or walang pwersa na pinilat sila, but in their own free will, free, uh, uh, their own accord, ay kinilala nila ang pangungusap ng Panginoon through the Holy Spirit and they subject themselves in the authority of the church at sila nagpasakop sa bautismo. So, alam natin that the church is not a building. Okay? It is not the villa. It is not the big structure. Although kailangan yon to gather the, num the, the numbers kung marami ang mga member ng simba at marami siyang umaaten. The church is you and me tayong mga iniligtas ng Panginoon. That's why the Greek word called ecclesia, it is the, the assembly of believers. Mga mana ng palataya, mga nagtiwala at nanampalataya na sa Panginoon, mga ligtas, redeemed people, gathering, fellowshipping with one another, safe people, gathered, assembling together to fulfill the will of God. Because it is the church na binigyan at iniwan ng Panginoon ng kanyang Great Commission in Matthew 28 hindi sa anumang organisasyon, public, private institution here on earth, but it is the church, not even our physical family, ang binigyan ng Panginoon. Because ibinigyan doon sa mga ligtas. Kahit pa yung mga personal nating mga relatives in our family, kung hindi pa sila mga ligtas, hindi sa kanila kasama, hindi sila kabilang doon sa binigyan ng Panginoon, ng Great Commission. It is the church na binigyan ng Panginoon ng Commission. So, tinatawag tayong church, ecclesia, assembly of believers. We are also called the bride, the vineyard, the vine, or the flock. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 30 to 32, ma-invite ko po ang mga uh, members ng church to please read it for me. Ephesians chapter 5, 30 to 32, ready read. call his bride. Now, yung pong bride and yung vineyard at saka yung flock, these are three dominant metaphors. When we say metaphors, parang illustration sa Old Testament na kung saan, ah sorry, illustration that the New Testament used to describe the church ay ito rin po binanggit doon sa Old Testament pertaining to the nation Israel. Okay? Meron siyang equivalent na illustration in the Old Testament. And alam natin na yung Israel also is an illustration on the, of the future church. God look upon Israel in, the, in her maidenhood, yung una natin binanggit, bride. Yung maidenhood 
is a condition of a young woman unmarried. So, therefore, therefore, yung parang pagiging bride in the context ng Panginoon looking upon the nation of Israel and the Lord Jesus Christ looking upon His bride, the church, as virgin. Okay? Spotless. So, God looked upon Israel in her maidenhood and also the Lord Jesus Christ looked upon His church as the virgin bride. In Hosea chapter 2, verse 19, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies, speaking of the nation of Israel. And when we see this word betroth, it is like God entering into a marriage with the nation of Israel. It is a marriage covenant with Israel. So spiritually, Israel became God's bride. God's bright people. And then from that point on, ang, ang Diyos po ay dinidil ang Israel in their continual unfaithfulness because nire-require niya nga na sila maging spotless. But unfortunately, the nation as we know ay naging unfaithful sa Panginoon. Marami silang mga gods na sinamba in the whole lifespan ng bansa na ito and what, when we can see that their account in the Old Testament. And so Israel, Hosea says, was indeed an unfaithful wife. Also in the New Testament, the church is a vine. Okay? So yun ang equivalent, bride, tayo rin ay tinignan ng Panginoon in the context of a bride, yung ating simbahan. And also as a vine or vineyard. It is also represented by the nation Israel. God said that He went and planted a vineyard. He said, I planted it in a very fertile hill. We can see that in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. At alam natin ang illustration of this, illustration of God taking Israel out of Egypt, doon sa kanilang bondage in Egypt, at dinala sila doon sa kanilang promised land, which is the land of Canaan. So, Yung pangatlo nating makikita ang metaphor is yung na ginamit ng Panginoon is yung flock. Okay? At na, na, napag-aralan natin yan doon sa ating IM series, doon sa The Good Shepherd. Okay? The Lord, uh, our God, treats the nation of Israel as a flock. His sheep fold at siya yung shepherd ng Israel. He led Joseph like a flock. That's what the Bible says. And has He redeemed this nation? From, the, from their bondage in Egypt, sabi ni Isaiah, para siyang shepherd na dinadala ang lamb kapag siya ay na i-injure. Ganun ang ginagawa ng sheep. Kapag ka na-injure ang kanyang mga sheep, hindi makalakad, papasanin, bubuhatin, ilalagay dito sa kanyang balikat at kanya nang dadalhin doon sa kung saan niya dapat dalhin ang lamb. Ganun din ang illustration na binanggit ni Isaiah. So after nung captivity sa Babylon, Isaiah again says that he gathered the lambs in his arms and gently led those that were with young. And his story reveals us, tells us that finally in 1947 or 48, talagang ginader na ng Panginoon ang kanyang bansang Israel at nagkaroon sila ng kanilang country finally. Dineclare na sila sa United Nations as a sovereign country. At isa ang ating bansa, ang Pilipinas na pumirma. Siya lamang, I believe, in Asia na umaprove dito sa declaration na ito ng United Nations. At naging country ang bansa na ito. Isa ng sovereign country right now. Yes, marami pa siyang mga kinakaharap na mga uh, 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 tawag dito, uh, resistances both doon sa kanilang lugar and in many countries, against many countries. But yet, it is one of the many prophecies that had been fulfilled. As they have their flag, they have their government well-functioning, they are a sovereign country right now. So, ang makikita natin doon sa tatlong metaphor na binanggit natin as a bride, as a vineyard, and as a flock, it is talking of a personal okay, relationship ng Diyos doon sa kanyang people of uh, 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 the nation of Israel. Now, we see these three images that God used to determine His relationship to Israel in the Old Testament. Okay? It stressed that God's deal, dealing with these people is direct. Personal. At yung equivalent na yon sa Old Testament ay alam nating equivalent din sa ating kapanahunan ngayon as a church 
tayo dinidil ng Panginoon as a personal, unang-una, bride, His vineyard, and also His flock. Now, there are many other metaphors na ginagamit dito to illustrate yung Israel, equivalent as a church. Tayo ay kinukol din na kingdom, household, or a family. Okay, kaya nga doon sa John 1.12, di ba? Nung tayo naligtas, tayo naging kabilang nasa pamilya ng Panginoon. Before we are not, John 1.12. But as many as receive Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe in His name. Okay? Nakabilang na tayo sa family of God. But finally, we are also called a body. At dito tayo magde-dwell. We are called a body. Yung parang literal na body natin. May mata, may ilong, may teinga, may kamay, may parte ang katawan natin. Kaya ganun ang binanggit kanina ni Apostle Paul. But you can see in Ephesians 5.30, For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bone. Of His bones. We are the body of Christ. But, in comparison, doon sa binanggit natin kanina na, na, na vineyard, na flock, at saka bride, yung body hindi binanggit sa Old Testament. Wala siyang equivalent metaphor in the Old Testament. The previous metaphors have major Old Testament equivalents. Bride, Israel. Shepherd, sheep yung Israel. Flock, flock niya rin yung Israel. Ganun din sa New Testament, may equivalent. But this metaphor body, walang equivalent doon sa Old Testament. The concept does not even exist in the Old Testament because this is our unique. Okay, hold on. This is our unique position in Christ. Kasama tayo, part ngayon tayo ng body ni Jesus Christ. Him being the head and we being having every part of that body. We can be the eye, we can be the nose, we can be the arms, we can be the legs. With the Lord Jesus Christ as the head of the body. So, may special na illustration ito. Okay? So, importanteng makita natin yung ating party right now. Kung sino tayo ngayon in the eyes of God, in the perspective of God. Yung kahalagahan ng ating ginaganapan right now bilang part ng isang simbahan. Napaka-espesyal. We are part of that body. Okay? So, ito yung function natin ngayon na hindi na-fulfill at hindi nagkaroon ng function ang bansang Israel that the church right now is fulfilling. Kaya ganun na lamang ang emphasis natin sa kahalagahan ng simbahan. At yung pagmamahal na ibibigay natin sa simbahan for it to thrive, to continue. Parang talagang nasa balikat natin. Although, syempre, ang Panginoon ang nangako na hindi niya papabayaan ang kanyang tunay na simbahan. But first and foremost, marami in the history of the church na namatay. In the book of Revelation, naandoon ang kanyang mga letter to the seven churches at marami doon ay, especially the book of, in the church of Ephesus, hindi na nag exist ngayon yung, bans, yung church na yan. Even yung word na Ephesus ay hindi na nga alam. May tinanong ako minsan isang Turkish, hindi niya alam yung lugar na yon. But it was in the country Turkey, yung present day natin ngayon na Turkey. And so much more, wala na talagang mga Kristiyano doon sa lugar na yon. Wala kang maririnig na pangalan na related to the Christian name or yung mga old prophet's name. Kasi alam natin kapag ka isang country is a Christian country o yung kanyang pundasyon, ano mga pangalan? John, Peter, Andrew, the apostles. Or yung mga uh, prophets, Samuel, David, Isaiah, Jacob, Joseph. But none in that place so far. And so, we, when we are in the right attitudes as part of that body, okay, now doon naman natin titignan ngayon, mahalaga na, at naintindihan natin ang ibig sabihin ng tunay na simbahan. Alam natin ang mahalagang, uh, tawag nito, ang mahalagang task at mandate ng isang tunay na simbahan. Hindi, walang equivalent doon sa Old Testament metaphors, ang body, sa atin lamang ngayon as the New Testament believers, ginamit yung word na body of Christ. But then, hindi natatapos doon. Okay? Doon sa understanding na yon. Here comes the challenge to every believer on how we can please our head, the head of the church, our God. 
how we can be a right church in His sight. And having right attitudes as part of the body will then please our God. At yun ang titignan natin ngayon. Hindi lamang ito, hindi ito kompleto, but I have three points, basic, upang maintindihan agad natin kung sometimes parang hindi natin nakikita ang ating sarili na kabilang at parang walang function na ginagawa doon sa ating simbahang kinabibilangan. Hindi po. It is the devil, it is the work of Satan na nagbibigay sa atin ng, kanyang, ng ganyang mga klaseng doubt. We have a part dahil ang Panginoon ang nag-aad sa simbahan para mapulpil ang purpose na gusto niya doon sa simbahan. And so every time na meron siyang inilalagay, it's not the numbers itself. May ma- merong, merong, merong hundreds, merong thousands na church, merong fifty, merong thirty, and yet lahat sila ay magpa-function as one body. Palagi silang enough, palagi silang sufficient, palagi silang kompleto in functioning and in doing the will of God and the task that God had given to them as a church. First and foremost, we will look at this point, <coughs> the truth about the individuality in the body. Okay. Ano ibig sabihin sa atin? Let's uh, pakibasa po muli sa akin. Let's uh, pakibasa po, 1 Corinthians 11, 12, to 17. Start. Are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit? If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is therefore, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, Where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Now, kailangan nating malam at maintindihan, meron tayong common denominator nung tayo ay naging part na ng isang simbahan. Okay? Ang i-eliminate natin dito is yung notion, yung idea, yung, yung thought na ang daling sabihin ng isang tao na siya ay member na agad ng isang simbahan just by being there in their fellowship. Ano yung common denominator dapat ng mga tunay na mananampalataya, na tunay na simbahan at tunay na miyembro ng isang simbahan? We are all baptized by one Spirit. Immersed. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Ang sabi dun sa mga binasa natin kanina, and God added unto the church. Okay? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And all baptized into one body. All made to drink of one spirit, the Bible says. So hindi pa pwedeng ang hindi paligtas ay part ng body. Never niyang maintindihan ang function ng isang tunay na simbahan because hindi nga siya part ng body. Labas siya dito sa parang physical na body. Hindi siya kamay, hindi siya daliri, hindi siya paa, hindi siya mata, hindi siya tainga, hindi siya ilong, hindi siya bibig. So anumang pilit na ipaunawa sa kanya, yung function ng church, hindi niya yung maunawaan. And might as well, hindi niya siya magiging kaisa moving forward doon sa mga gagampanang gawain ng isang tunay na simbahan. It is the Spirit of God who made possible for us to be part of the body. Okay? Wala tayo ni anumang effort on our own para maging part ng body kaya ang Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 says it very clearly for by grace ye are saved by faith it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast wala tayong anumang effort kakayanan na ilagay ang ating sarili by our own doon sa body of Christ yung simbahan it is the holy spirit working first in an unbeliever After hearing the word of God, after hearing, hearing the preaching of the gospel, after having <clears throat> somebody sharing to him or her the gospel of salvation, then he or she responded 
by accepting the truth and believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died for His or her salvation at tinanggap yung libreng regalo ng kaligtasan. Look at, look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you had He quickened who were dead in trespass and sins. Papaano nga isang patay ay makaka respond kung hindi siya muna gisingin sa kanyang pagkakapatay in the spirit. Ano yon Dead in trespass and sins. That's our condition. Nung tayo ay hindi paligtas, tayo patay sa kasalanan. And so the Holy Spirit, after we hear the preaching of the gospel, the Holy Spirit quickened us. At doon lamang tayo nakapag-respond after the work of the Holy Spirit. The same in St. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath He quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. In our own capacity, we cannot, we will not turn to God. So we do not believe sa mga turo na yun na kung saan purong tayo lamang ang nagkaroon ng decision. It is the work of the Holy Spirit when we hear the preaching, when we hear the gospel of salvation preached unto us, shared unto us, then we respond. At kaya meron tayong commonality after we got saved. Lahat tayo ay baptized into one spirit. It is the same Holy Spirit na nag-work lahat sa atin. Amen? Amen. Nung tayo ay naligtas. Kaya minsan ina-undermine ang work of the Holy Spirit. No, He is a person co-equal in the Trinity, God the Father and God the Son. But, we have that commonality. We are all saved. Isa ang nag-work sa atin, Holy Spirit, isang message of salvation ang ating narinig. Lahat yun, common sa atin lahat. But as a member of the body, we have individuality. Okay? Iba-iba naman ngayon yung ating temperaments. Ano yung temperaments? Yung patang aring karakter. And mind you, hindi dapat binabago ng simbahan yung mga karakter na yun. Kung ano tayo, yun ay inilagay tayo ng Panginoon doon because God wants that character, that temperament, that individuality. Otherwise, kung pare-parehong kamay, hindi magpa-function. Okay? As a member, we have all, all our different temperaments or characters, but we retain that personality. The Corinthian Church, unfortunately, nung nirebuk ni Apostle Paul, ay nakalimutan ang katotohanan na ito. Ginamit nila yung individuality into division. Pakibasa niyo po sa akin. Medyo nakangatin yung akin lalamunan eh. Pakibasa po 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 7. Ready, read. <laughs> Not with meat. You were not able to bear it. Able. Sit, let's sit together. For ye are not yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. You see? The problem with the church, ginamit nila yung kanilang pagkakaiba-iba into what? Grouping into division. Yung carnality nila, yung kanilang iba-ibang karakter, maybe yung isa gusto ang approach ni Paul in preaching. Maybe isa gusto ang approach ni Apollos in dealing with members. So, yung kanilang individuality, yung kanilang temperaments, different personalities and character, ginamit nila in the context what of division. Not to complement each other para mag-function sila into one body. One church. And Paul rebuked this church. And so, we shouldn't belong to be someone else. You see, ako po ang parang, ang parang uh, tawag dito, uh, sorry, nakalimutan ko. We shouldn't long to be someone else. We accept ourselves as we are. Nung tayo ay member ng isang simbahan, may kanya-kanya tayong personality and character, but not in the context of accepting sinfulness. 
Doon naman dapat united din tayo. If there is sin in the church, we condemn sin, we deal with sin, we face it, we deal with it. But we accept our different personalities, our individualities, our characters, our, our temperaments. And when we do that, may iba-ibang character, may iba-ibang skills, may iba-ibang personality, pinag-isa mo, that produces, that approach produces yung strong bond of unity. Alam mong iba-iba ang mga ugali natin, iba-iba ang mga karakter, pero ang objective natin is mag-meet tayo palagi sa middle, pagsamasamahin yun, then the, the church, the body of, of, of Christ, will function as the way God wants them to function. So wag natin kakalimutan yun, may kanya-kanya tayong personalidad, individuality, doon din design ng Panginoon ang simbahan. Kailangan yun for us to thrive. Kaya ang sabi dito, tingnan niyo po, oh, si, yes, si Apollos, si, si Paul ang nagplan, maaring siya ang nag, uh, nag, uh, nag, uh, nag-preach, si Apollos ang nag-water, but at the end of all of this, hindi magkakaroon ng miyembro yung mga simbahan if God will not save every person, if, not, if God will not put or give the increase. But God that give it the increase, but God gave the increase. Dalawang beses inulit ni Apostol Pablo. So, simpleng, simpleng katuruan, there is individuality. Let's open our eyes, let's open our mind to this truth. Rather than maging stepping, uh, parang ano siya, parang stumbling block. Sa halip na maging stumbling block na kapag meron tayong ayaw na karakter o personalidad, immediately we were sidelined that member, that person. We embrace the individuality, the different personality, the different temperament. At kapag ganun, ka, ka, ka-stretch yung ating pasensya at pangunawa, pinagsama-sama mo yung sa gitna, the band of unity will be very strong. So let's look at this context bilang isang part tayo ng simbahan. How are we in extending that, it understanding yung lalago tayo sa pananampalataya na alam natin na may iba-iba na personalidad ang kada isang miyembro rather than gagamitin katulad ng First Corinthian Church into dividing themselves. Yung kanilang iba-ibang personalidad at karakter ginamit nila into a negative thing that divides them. Okay? So the individuality in the body, there is. Okay? Normal. Kumbaga, normal po iyon. Dapat lang na-embrace natin na normal siya. At magandang naandoon yun yung diversity ng iba-iba nating mga personalidad at mga karakter. But also, after knowing and understanding that, at kung clear na yan sa ating heart at sa ating mind, therefore, there is no inferiority in the body. Dahil nakikita natin mahalaga ang lahat sa mata ng Panginoon. It is God who has set us or placed us in the body. It is God who disposes or showered us with various gifts as it pleases Him. I am so blessed na sa bawat um, membro ng simbahan, pre-pandemic, di ba? Kung sana lamang na ang mga idea, kung, kung paano tayo makapagpapatuloy, lumabas na lumabas. Through the skills and the talents ng mga kabataan natin, at yung choir na nagkaroon ng kanilang mga online na pag-aawitan, recorded sermon, yung mga mga posters na ginagawa ni, ni James, pagre-record ni Samuel, pag live si Janjan doon sa ating mga Facebook, si Jairus, at yung mga, kabata, yung mga kababaihan, kalalakihan ng members ng choir, lahat nagsusulputan na, na hindi na natin kailangan yung complication in what? In just, in just putting ourselves into the, into the ministry. At nagpapatuloy po tayo. Nagpapatuloy ang mga simbahan because of that. At paano nangyari yun? Because of the different personality. Yung iba-ibang pananaw, yung iba-ibang nakikita nila, nakakailanganin. And when you subject yourself into that positive challenge, ay talagang dadami ng dadami ang contribution mo sa simbahan in so many ways. Wala tayong problema sa ministry ng pagkain, palaging maraming pagkain. Sa mga ministry ng mga naguugas ng mga pinggan, mga nagluluto, kapag may event tayo, lahat yung mga, mga poster, lahat yung mga 
hindi ko na alam kung ano mga terminology. Oh, yung mga mag invite ng mga bisita. Si, si Sister Lee, yan palagi top notcher sa pag invite ng mga bisita. Oh. Mga taga-balot, kung, kung yan pagsasama-samahin natin lahat, that, that may be small, but that produces a strong bond of unity in the church. Going to our mandate, to our great commission, to win souls, and then later on to disciple them, praying for one another. Wala tayong problema dyan. During our prayer meeting, kabilang ang bawat isa doon sa panalanginan. After our service, we will have our congregation. Naniniwala ang lahat sa kahalagahan ng panalangin through the church. Lahat po iyan, is, lista natin ang ilista, contributes to that strong bond of unity that preserves the church. And there is no inferiority in the body. Pakibasa po muli, verses 18 to 22. Sige po. You see? Ano po yung verse 18 muna sinabi? Verse 18 is parang a bridge. A bridge verse that connect a link, a verse that connects the dot. It is God who has set us or placed us in the body. Okay, sabi po doon, God disposed and showered us with various gifts as it pleases Him. Now, look at verse, verses 21 to 22. Because ang Panginoon ang naglagay, hindi natin masasabi na yung isa is inferior, na wala siyang function, wala siyang naitutulong. Having that mindset contradicts the God who placed that person doon sa loob ng simbahan. Kapag gano'n ang mindset natin, gano'n ang heart natin, para natin sinasabi direct sa Panginoon, nagkamali ka ng paglalagay sa Kanya doon sa simbahan. And that is wrong and dangerous. Hindi gano'n ang atin tindig sa kada isang member ng simbahan. Look at verses 21 to 22. Much more those members of the body which seems to be more feeble or, or are, are necessary. Feeble. Okay? Yung parang mahina sa tingin natin na parang hindi siya nakakapag-contribute ng marami doon sa gawain ng Panginoon. Because there is beauty with being different personalities and characters and that we are not all the same. Because of our diversity, we then complement one another and that is the balance in the church. And as we complement one another, we become servants one to another. Serving one another. Alam nyo, the only age that I have right now is because God entrusted to me the pulpit for preaching. But in the eyes of God, we're all the same. You can rebuke me. Amen? Amen. Well, hindi na po, sa inyo yun, kay Ate Jo, hindi, hindi na madaling ano yun, i-consider talagang alam niya na na she will rebuke me. Pero ang ibig nating sabihin, yun lang age ng pastor na naan yan. Kaya nga siya ay under shepherd. What to feed the flock? That's the only. Hindi nga age yun eh. Actually, is parang privilege na ibinigay doon sa pastor. But when it comes to our relationship with one another, we are the same in the eyes of God. Okay? Naandito lang po ako mas mataas na nakikita ko kayo in the pulpit. Beyond that, we are all equal in the sight of God. Okay, we look one to the welfare of each other. Merong nangangailangan, we attend as a church. We rejoice doon sa mga blessing na natatanggap ng mga kapatiran. Kung merong naandoon sa uh, karamdaman o may mga, mga problema, we also, in the situation na kung saan, Nakiki, hindi man nakikiramay, pero sinasamahan natin unay-unay sa panalangin at kung anumang physical na ating mai, i-attend o maitutulong doon sa kapatid. That's how the church operates. Maring minsan, hindi tayo ganun ka-active sa mga bagay na ito, but iset natin sa ating mind and eventually, kusa siya na magpo-flow 
sa ating mga lifestyle on how we deal, on how we treat each other. But in the context of equality, walang mas. That's the point. Walang mas lamang o walang mas mataas o walang mas malapit doon sa Panginoong Jesus in the context of us being part of that body. We are all equal in the sight of God. Kayo nang binanggit kanina sa verses 22 to 24. And when we continue in verses 22 to 24, Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon this we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need. But God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Even the feeble, weak man sa tingin natin, frail or delicate man sa atin, wala man sa tingin natin na ikukontribute doon sa pagpapatuloy ng gawain ng simbahan, they are needed. Amen? Yan yun. So, ang public, dineclare yan ng, ng Panginoon through His Word in the book of Corinthians. So, ano ngayon ang role natin? Alamin. Declare natin yung sa isa't isa. Kung ako ay sa tingin ko, ako ay feeble doon sa simbahan, still needed pala ako. So, hindi ka mamumuhay na parang yung guilt mo is overwhelming na parang tingin mo wala kang nagiging part sa simbahan. You have, you are needed Otherwise, kulang yung parte ng katawan. It cannot function properly. The context is that no one should be looked down on. There is always that spirit of honoring one another, respecting one another, valuing one another, because that's the God God's concept of the church. Imagine niyo kung ang lahat yung kung ang lahat is kamay. Paano siya magkapangsyon? Paano kung ang lahat is gusto? Leader. Paano kung ang lahat is gusto, tagapaawit? Ta paano ang lahat is gusto, yung itong ministry, wala na yung iba. Pare-pareho na yun na lang ang ministry. Ha ministry. How can that church function? And in the eyes of God, tayo lang namimisan ang nagsasabi sa ating mata na kung saan kung sino yung mga nasa harapan, mas mataas ang kanilang ginagawa. Hindi po, magugulat na lang tayo. Pagharap natin sa Panginoon, pantay-pantay lahat ang mga effort na yan. Kasi nga, siya nga ang naglagay doon sa simbahan. Siya ang nagkompleto ng body. Magugulat na lang tayo, equal sa paningin ng Panginoon ng lahat. Ang nire-require niya is faithfulness. But it's important for us to understand, we are part of the church. Meron kang role na ginagampanan. Huwag mong i-undermine na yan ay maliit. Ikaw lang ang nagsasabi nun, not in the eyes and in the sight of God. Because of this context na ating nakikita in the book of Corinthians. Finally, if there is individuality in the body that results to no inferiority in the body, later on, we have to also to live in constant, intimate fellowship with one another. And that ends in verses 25 to 26. That there should be no schism in the body, but that their members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. The verse 25, the word na ginamit ng Panginoon is schism. When I look at this word, it says, it is a split or division between strongly opposed sections or parties. Caused by differences in opinion or belief. You see? Papasok to sa simbahan kapag in-entertain natin ang personality to divide. Opinions to divide. Beliefs to divide. Kaya nga, establish muna natin, we have one commonality. It is the Holy Spirit who placed us. It is God who called us and add into the church. Wala tayong kinalaman doon. Wala tayong party doon. Siya ang naglagay sa atin doon sa loob ng simbahan to fulfill or to play the role bilang isang part ng body. So yung ating different personalities or different temperaments or characters ay huwag nating pabayang o i-entertain na magamit ng jablo to sow iskisim. To sow iskisim. That is for that reason that we have common source of what we believe and that is the Word of God, the Bible. 
immediately kung meron tayong magiging member dito na suddenly tasabihin niya na no, I am 50-50 with the Bible, hindi siya ngayon pepeding makapagpatuloy doon sa direksyon because we know that this is, we believe that it is the infallible word of God. Amen? At doon pa sa mga susunod na mga doktrin ng simba, the way that that's why we are studying the Word of God, so that we will be in unity in doctrines. Dahil yun ang ginawa ng new, early New Testament church. And they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine. Pinapakain ang simbahan ng tamang doktrina coming from the Word of God. We have common Holy Spirit who brought us all here in the church. We have common means of our salvation. Grace of God through faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have common commission, win souls for Christ. We have common hope to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Lahat niyang common yan dapat sa atin. Alisin mo ang isa doon o against ka o iba ang pananaw mo, hindi ka talaga magiging effective, nakabahagi ng simbahan. Might as well, ay lumipat ka ng ibang body. Kung hindi ka kaisa doon sa common commonality na mayroon ang isang body of Christ. Ito lang binanggit ko is the basic, the most important commonality that we have. Common source of our belief, the Bible, common Holy Spirit who brought us all here, common means of our salvation, the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ, our common commission is to win souls. Kung ang kaatin ng commission at task dito is hindi na mag, mag-akay o mag, mag-win ng kaluluwa, ay wala na tayo doon sa pamantayan ng isang tunay na simbahan. And so we remind ourselves, lahat ng mga program ang ating ginagawa, Friday after Friday na services natin, is for the soul to win. And later on, be discipled. And since there will be no schism, then we start caring for one another. We start loving one another. We immediately respond when another members. Nagiging madali na yung mga susunod na ministry ng church kapag yung common doctrines, wala tayong problema. We rejoice with the brethren in their blessings. We are not to be divided, but to be of one accord. That's why in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The psalmist understand the same. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Therefore, there will be God's individual blessing, mga kapatid. When you decided for yourself, now that you're saved, naintindihan mo ngayon, hindi ko pwedeng paglingkuran at maplis ang Panginoon outside of the church na magsaserve lang ako individual. No, I have to be in the church. I have to be part of that body. And when you decide yourself, decided to, for yourself that you will extend, look at this, extra effort, to be in unity with fellow brethren in the church, anumang mayroong activity yung simbahan for the furtherance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, kahit pa sa tingin natin sometimes ay boring, and we extend more effort to be in unity and to be part of the many ministry of the church, then God is pleased and God is honored. And in return, He honors those decisions. Somehow, yan din yung simpleng formula ng pagpapala ng Panginoon sa atin when we act unselfishly as a part of the church. And that is the context of being part of the body. You do not operate selfishly o nag-iisa. That parang you, 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 you are looking more on giving doon sa welfare ng simbahan for them, for the church to move forward in fulfilling God's mandate. At yun nga yung equation. And when God pleased in the church, don't you think, madamot ang ating Panginoon na pagpalain din ang mga individual na buhay natin? Hindi po. Pangako yun ang Panginoon. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So we start to exercise to extend more living unselfishly, also giving for the welfare of the church in many aspects of the need of the church with one goal in mind because alam nating sa simbahan na piplis ang Panginoon. There is individuality in the body. 
that leads to no inferiority in the body. Pinapahalagahan natin ang lahat. At tayo rin, kung ikaw man ngayon kapatid sa mga mananampalataya, kung ikaw yung nasa simbahan, ang tingin mo parang wala kang part, hindi po. Hindi magpapunction ang simbahan kung kulang. Merong kang parte, palaging merong kang parte doon sa simbahan. At do not undermine that part. Do not undermine that part. May tinawag ang Panginoon na haharap dito sa tablado. May, tinawag, may binigyan ng Panginoon ng magaling kumanta, tumugtog ng instrumento, mag-preach. May, may, may magaling sa, uh, sa ibang ministry ng pagluluto o sa pag-invite ng mga bisita, pag-entertain ng mga visitors. Pero huwag tayo sana ang maglagay ng level ng taas. They are all equal in the sight of God. Lahat ng ministry po na yun. Amen? And so we complement each other sa lahat ng anumang bagay natin nagagawa, basta ang objective natin is para makapagpatuloy ang simbahan. Every time na may Friday services ang inyong mga simbahan, Sunday services ang simbahan, therefore, napupulfill ang kalooban ng Diyos sa simbahan. Napupulfill ang kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay ng bawat isang Kristiyano kasi nagpapatuloy ang simbahan. So what, when, what happens when a church function as a body in unity? Let's consider the first century church. In one day, thousands are converted and churches are established. In Acts 17, 1-6, let's read together. Now when they had passed through and, um, Peopolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures opening and alleging that Christ must need have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a grew multitude, and of the cheap women not a few. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy took unto them certain lewd fellows of the laser, of the baser sort, and gathered at a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them, not they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, This is the last statement, This that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Ang unang simbahan, the early church, the first century church, ang tingin sa kanila, those who turn the whole world upside down because of the message that they preach, because of their testimony na kanilang pinapakita in their community. Could this scenario still happen today? Oh yes, nakikita natin may mga malalaking mga simbahan pinagpala ng Panginoon to fulfill that great commission. Iba-iba ang mga numbers. But how about us? First and foremost, ang encouragement natin sa atin sarili bilang parte ng isang simbahan, I myself, ako'y resolve na sa katotohanan na ito. Let us not be overwhelmed. Okay? Huwag tayong ma-overwhelm at parang be pressured by the numbers or parang putting a quota, attaining a certain quota or numbers. Saan ang gagaling yun? When we compare to other churches and it's not healthy, hindi rin iyon ang tinuturo ng salita ng Diyos. Ang ina-expect sa isang mana ng palataya sa loob ng simbahan is faithfulness. No more, no less. Faithful part of the body so that God is pleased and honored in that body. Ang katotohanan, we are brought in this world through what? Through physical birth. Amen? Paano tayo dumating dito sa lupa? Ipinanganak tayo ng ating nanay. Naging kabilang tayo doon sa ating physical family. We cherish the family. We love our physical family. But in the context of the Word of God and how He look at every Christian, in the eyes of God, His plan ever since is for every person to be part, to be included in His spiritual family. Pagdating natin doon sa kalangitan, our physical relationship, wala na. It doesn't matter. It's not, ang, ang naandun na is magkakapatid tayo lahat sa 
pananampalataya sa ating Panginoon. We are all brothers and sisters in the faith. Sinimulan nyo nung tayo naligtas, kaya nga ulitin ko yung John 1.12, but as many as receive him to them, gave you the power to become the sons of God. At yun ay ini-exercise na natin ngayon whilst we are in the church. Kaya namimiss ng isang mana ng palataya yung great blessings na ibinibigay sa pamilya ng Panginoon sa body ng Panginoon when you are outside of the family, when you are outside of the body. At hindi lamang yung pagpapala na yon tinuruan din tayo na meron tayong parte, may obligasyon, meron tayong effort, may responsibility, may pagpapagol, may pagpapagad, papagal, may pagpapagod. Okay? May trabaho din tayong gagawin. Kung doon sa mga pinagtatrabahuhan nating mga kumpanya, sa mga kabataan na nag-aaral, you see the value of effort and hard work much more doon sa simbahan kung i-extend natin ang ating mind in fulfilling God's will in our lives through the church. Because yun ever since ang kanyang plano. Yun ever since ang kanyang gusto for us to be in His spiritual family. At saan mo yun matatagpuan? When you are in the body of Christ. When you are in the church. Yes, there will be different personalities of in or individuality, but we will use that beautiful diversity upang magkaroon tayo ng commonality at doon sa gitna ay magkakaroon tayo ng strong bond of unity. When we cherish, when we respect, when we value yung different personalities or temperaments that we have. At dahil doon, we will not look na mayroong inferior. O doon sa gawain ng Panginoon, ililis natin ang mas mataas sa harapan ng Panginoon. Tayo na mismo magsasabi lahat yan ay equal. Maganda lahat yan sa harapan ng Panginoon. Napi-please ang Panginoon sa anumang bagay na ginagawa mo just to have that one goal and that is to further the work of God through the church. And God is honored, God is pleased, and when He is honored, He is pleased in the church, God honors our labor. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Sama-sama po natin this new year. Have that commonality. Hindi na tatin hihintay ng sarili natin na parang parang pansinin pa to fulfill our mandate. Tayo na mismo aalamin natin. Ibabayo natin ang lahat ng ginagawa natin ay makakatulong to further the church. I will do it. I will be part of it. At sa mga tagapakinig po natin na mga mana ng palataya, alam nyo, the best thing to do that is just to be active in your attendance because it encourages your fellow brethren when you are there with them, praying one another. Sama-sama kayong umaawit, sama-sama kayong nananalangin, sama-sama kayong nakikinig ng salita ng Diyos. That's the first thing that a believer. Kaya yun ang turo sa Hebrews chapter 10, 25. That forsaking ourselves one to another. Pero lalo pa tayo ngayong magtipon-tipon, magpanalanginan sa bawat isa. Look one after another as we see the day approaching. At yun pa lang ay may malaki ka ng impact, kapatid. In elevating, in furthering the ministry, the welfare ng iyong lokal na simbahan. Sa amin pong mga hindi pa nakakatiyak kung saan tutungo ang inyong kaluluwa kung dumating ang kamatayan, hindi nakatitiyak kung ikaw ba talaga ay kristyano, hindi nakatitiyak na ikaw ba talaga ay parte ng body. It starts from salvation. Here is the message that you have heard today, not by accident, that you have sinned or wronged against God and the penalty of that sin is hell. And you cannot be right with God through your own effort, through your own selves, whatever belief system you might have. The Bible ay tinuruan tayo ng tamang kaparaanan, ng means on how to be right with God. The Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man come to the Father but by me. Ang kailangan mong gawin ngayon, kaibigan, ay panampalatayanan yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Tanggapin sa iyong puso, sa iyong buhay, nang may pananampalataya siya ang namatay sa iyo, para sa iyong kasalanan na mapagbayaran, tanggapin yon in your heart right now by faith. And the Bible says you can be saved. At pangalawa, 
pray for that right church na ikaw ay maging kabilang. And when you find, when you found that true church, na bautismohan ka naging member, then include yourself. Treat yourself as a genuine part of that body na inilagay ng Holy Spirit, na inilagay ng Diyos to fulfill a very special, unique role that you alone will play. Otherwise, hindi nakakapag-function ng maganda ang simbahan kung hindi mo ini-involve ang iyong sarili. It's a good challenge, start of the year. Let us all pray. Let's all stand up. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, salamat po muli for this time that we can nurture through your word, be nurtured through your word. Simple message today, Panginoon. Alam ko pong ito ay narinig na ng mga maraming mga mananampalataya. But a good way to start our year. Kung nandun po kami sa sitwasyon that somehow we find ourselves in the church. Yes, we are saved. We are members of that church. We are baptized and part of that body. But somehow, parang hindi po namin napapansin na kami mahalaga. Well, ito po ay hindi tama sa pamantayan ng salita. We have a role and a part to play ano mang ministry na mayroon po kami, with that goal to further your work is honoring, pleasing unto thy sight. At kami mismo lahat bilang isang, isang simbahan Panginoon ay mag value at i-appreciate ang bawat isa. Even the feeble, kung sa mata namin, sa tingin namin, ay walang, ay walang nagiging contribution, weak, feeble, fragile. Baguhin namin ang aming pananaw na ito. Dahil sa iyong salita ang nagsabi, na kailangan sila lahat, kailangan kami lahat for us to function as one united body. Mahirap kung ang isang paa ay pupunta sa paatras, ang isang paa ay papunta sa magmumu forward, walang mapupuntahan. Walang unity kung ang kamay, ang kaliwa, ang iba ang ginagawa not in, in, in supporting the, what the right hand has been doing. But we also recognize the truth and it is a beautiful thing that we are different in so many things. We have different personalities, temperaments, characters. And that's a good and beautiful thing to understand and to know. Kailangan po namin yung diversity ng pagkakaiba-iba namin ng skills, ugali, pananaw. But when it comes to sinfulness, we become united as well and in one and in unity to deal with that sin, condemn sin in the life of the church. Kung mayroong mga kapatid na nahuhulog sa kasalanan, ipanalangin ang bawat isa. And if that time comes, kailangan na siyang ideal as one, as united church, with one goal, and that is to restore that brother into the sheepfold. Encourage yung mga kapatid na kung saan ay napanghihinaan ang kanilang pananampalataya. But remind also those who are intentionally living or iniiwanan ang Panginoon, iniiwanan ang kanyang simbahan. But above all, help us, O God, to pray for one another. Upang sama-sama po kami, Panginoon, there may be 30, there may be 50, there may be hundreds, there may be thousands of members of a church, but lahat po ay makakapag-function ayon sa iyong kagustuhan, ayon sa iyong kalooban if we will have the right mindset on how we treat one another, our individualities, that there will be no inferiority, that we will constantly fellowship with one another with one goal, and that is to further your work sa lugar na dinala mo kami, Panginoon. Hindi kami aksidenteng nandito sa bansa na ito o sa amang lugar kaming nandoon, but specific because ikaw po ang nag a sa simbahan para po mapulfill ang aming part habang hinihintay ka namin, Panginoon, makita namin ang kahalagahan ng existence namin right now, kung bakit kami po yung dito pa sa lupa at hindi mo pa kami kinukuha, Panginoon, and that is to fulfill your mandate, your task, your will in our life. That can only be done, that will honor you and please you when we do that, being part of the body of Christ. 
Thank you once again. Kayo po nawaan na papurihan sa aming kalagitnaan. Panginoon, thank you for the blessing through your word. This we ask and pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Muli, abangan niyo po yung aming po mga recorded sermon doon po sa aming uh, uh, website, dunesbaptist.org. Kung mayroon po kayong mga katanungan or prayer items, pwede niyo pong isulat po doon and we will also include that in our prayer list. Nawa po kayo nga ng Panginoon sa buong sanlinggo. Kita-kita po muli tayo next Friday. And next Friday po, magsisimulo po tayo ng bago nating series in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs yung atin pong titignan. Okay? And so, God bless you all. Stay safe. And kita-kita po tayo next Friday.